Hey guys, we're in Connecticut for another private event. Hoping to do a little bit of business. Two, three hours worth of work. Perhaps we can do about a half a million in business. Let's go. Last time we've sold a couple of hundred grand. I think we go over 500 today. Well, we've sold over a couple hundred grand last time, but then we also gained a few really good clients that moving forward. Bought afterwards. You know? Yeah, so. that's, and that's the point of this. This is, this is actually the best, I, I think the most productive form of marketing, meeting people face to face. Like we have no inventory. Oh, please. I just like to right buy and one. have a lot of. And then I complain when we have too much. When we don't have as much, I complain again. You know what makes a good buyer? Somebody that's never satisfied. That's what makes a good buyer. Wow. So Look this that. is the most expensive knife he's ever made because that's a solid gold frame. And How I, much is that knife retail? Between 250 and 275. This is amazing too. Who made this one? That is uh, by Lecoq. Lecoq. A French maker. How much is inside this entire case ballpark? Uh, I brought like around 1.2. 1.2, wow. Knives is always a genre I was afraid to get into because I know it's a very slippery slope. This is, wow. What year is that one? 2022. 40K. That's brand new? Brand new, yeah. Are those diamond baguettes? No. These are regular. Is this gold? Not rose gold. All right, take it on. And how much you want for this? 40,000. You said he brought it? What the f did you just say? Oh, right. 37 something. Well, you pay tax and you gotta actually get it. Yeah, just walk yeah. over here with yeah. the yeah. Yeah. Look at it carefully. It's very, very, very subtle. You gotta play around with it. Literally play around with it. So, what I'm trying to explain to the gentleman is uh, he looked for a Date 8 40 in yellow gold 22823 with a black motif dial. The stock photo that Rolex displays shows it a lot more vibrant than it actually is in real life. When you actually have to watch in real life, you have to really, really narrow in on the dial to catch that diagonal motif. And with the lighting in there, there's no way he can tell. So I asked him to come outside under daylight to see it. It's very, very subtle. Oh, uh, ready? It comes out. That's how you I know. It. I know, I know. That's, how you That's the winder. Oh, it sounds amazing. Uh, how much is it? 12. 10. 10. 10 G's. You guys believe that's ten thousand dollars for that grenade by Lipe? Comment below if you would buy it. How's it going so far? Oh, fantastic. How many watches have we sold? Zero. Six hours later. Well, that was an absolute miss. We were anticipating selling five hundred thousand dollars worth of watches based on the last trade show that we did. That was super successful. But that's the nature of the business, and on we go. But I put it back in the bin that everybody grabs watches from, and I need to know where it goes. Put GPS on it. You're 100% responsible for any watch you pull. Any watch you pull is your responsibility. You pulled it. So Natasha exploded on Kevin, and the reason was because he pulled watches that he was therefore responsible for and never returned them come end of day. At the end of the day, it's his responsibility. I don't want to hear any excuses. You have to return the watch that you pull. When you pull the watch, at the end of the day, you have to locate that watch, wrap it yourself, and then put it back right. in the box or whatever. What do you need, like pictures of six, eight, ten watches? Some of this stuff has been in stock forever. Like I, I, I just, I don't get it. Like I pull two watches a day, if that. We've been having this conversation, we want to sell old shit. You've got plenty of fucking pictures on your phone of old shit. There's no way you can't tell me you don't. Post that shit. What do you need to be pulling? Four or five watches a day. The reason, the reason why I don't even care about what you're saying is because I didn't even take that watch out of the bin. If it was me, it would fall on me. That's the thing. You understand? Like it, it's it's the person yeah, who pulls it is responsible for that watch. Issue. The responsibility piece of pulling it, yeah. But the main issue is, and the main well, the end of recap is she was salty. Super salty. That's what happens just there. Salty. Yeah. You mean salty. <laughs> that is my like, not our lingo. <laughs> Everybody agreed except for you, so don't try to play Romans in Miami, you're the new boss. Everybody agreed she was salty. And anytime you pull something, you're responsible for that watch. It's just the way it is. So at the end of the day, I understand Marco and what he's saying. We don't need to watch all the time. We don't have to take a bunch of pictures. But in this case, things got out of control. Were you wrong or in the right? Uh, wrong, middle right. <laughs> I honestly don't have any time to argue. I have a client to attend to. Today, we have my boy Druval here. He He's um, grabbing a new piece. He had a Cartier before. I believe it was a two-tone, right? Yeah, two-tone. Two-tone. It was a medium. So today he's leveling up and grabbing this beauty. Santos, blue dial. One of my favorite watches. I think, honestly, when it comes to this piece, it could probably be worn a lot more, you would say? Yeah. And um, yeah, tell them a little bit about what you do. He, uh, he's, uh, a, he's a reseller also, but not with watches. Resell sneakers and I also uh, sell on Amazon. What do you like about this watch? The blue face, definitely. I like the, All the, day. the blue face and then 
I just think it's a lot cleaner than the other watch, and it's a lot bigger too, so it looks a lot better on the wrist. And what you explained was like you kind of want something that's more like, I guess you would say like professional, something that's better for an everyday wear, yeah. dressing up or dressing down. I yeah. think I think that's the best watch and to do. it's a great watch for business too, yeah. Beautiful. By the time this guy's 30, you'll have either a Daytona or who knows, maybe a Richard Mill, who knows? <laughs> the future's bright. Maybe a Richard Mill. Yeah, there you go. What's he wearing today? Uh, one one six six oh, one zero. Nice. Dude, I you know I wanted. I'm a big fan of the No Date. No Date's the one I actually want to get next as yeah. well. It's definitely one of those things you have to see in person to, yeah, to get the quality. So my new client is currently looking for a Vacheron Constantine. He's looking for the 4500B, which as you guys know is a personal favorite of mine. And we're currently working on a deal, possible trade. Hopefully we can help him out. Do you have the uh, other straps for it? Uh, that one I do believe. We have um, two kits. One is a Unworn 2022 and the other one is pre-owned. I'd have to find out the year. But I do believe the unworn comes with both straps as well. You don't happen to have the straps right now? To uh, not on me at the right? moment, no sir. Uh, but also with the bracelets, we can also take off links on that as well. Oh yeah. I wish I could see it with the straps on it because that's like yeah. the one thing where, you know, if on the strap it might look a little... Yeah, it looks, it looks a little bit more, even more sporty. I guess is the word for it, but yeah, it definitely looks cool. I can't try any of these on with the the, the rubber strap. With right the now. rubber strap, let me see if we have the box. Because uh, as much stuff. as I love, I love this bracelet mm -hmm. with the Maltese cross. It's just it's too big on the wrist, man. I would yeah. pretty much just wear it with the rubber strap. So I have to it. see. Let me check for you. Sure, real quick. Thank you. I'll be right back. Uh, he wants to uh, try it on with the strap, but I don't think I don't know if we have anybody here that can change the strap. I was wondering if I could get the box papers for this one possibly if we have the strap he wants to try it on with the strap Let's yeah. see this all right Let's see Who's playing right now? yeah this one does come with the uh, black strap and the yeah, leather I'm, strap I'm, here I'm, as well to, this has to be the easiest system I've ever seen on any yeah on earth. you think more comfortable on the strap than the I mean it's more comfortable that's for yeah. sure I'm just trying to think if the dial is just or the case is just like too big for this wrist Kind of makes it a little more under the radar even yeah. with, the, with the strap on too. So he really wasn't comfortable with the metal bracelet, but he did prefer the rubber strap. He hasn't bought it yet, but I'm about half a million in sales for the month. I'm hoping this one goes through. We can help him out with the trade. Keep going. I think the only person I've ever seen wear this is Eminem. Eminem. Hi, my name is what? My name is what? My name is what? name is Sadie. Which is second greatest rapper of all time, <laughs> the Drake. The, the bottom line as to why I got it is because I got it from a trusted source who knows what he's doing. He's always very fair. I don't know the market on this, but based on the price that he gave it to me to sell to our clients for, we had a small markup. I felt it was fair to offer it out. So that's really the reason behind this one. This is, this is also very cool. This was a very fair price, 5066J. Insane condition, uncut strap. Actually has papers with it as well. This 3970 I actually picked up. I did not buy it. You know the reason why I picked this up? Jay-Z picked up a $24.99, which is obviously a different price. A little rare. <laughs> a little rare. A little rare. Uh, this is the successor to the $24.99 at 3970 So it's that same look. This is actually a factory paddock integrated bracelet. Somebody special ordered this and it actually identifies that on the archive papers which are coming for this. So I felt like, you know what? This is kind of very cool to offer to our clients and it's actually at a favorable price too so 39.70 i have a client that i've been working with he's a good client of mine for years so he's in between something he, he he's going off that uh he he works in sweats and he wants to dress follow my lead and he's going for it right now he has to trade in a few rolexes so he's in between this this lang annual calendar and this protect 5396g annual calendar so I have to explain to him why he should take one or the other. Marco, what are your thoughts? 5396 or the Lange? To be honest with you, if, if I'm being personally honest, Patek made an annual calendar in a wristwatch. However, I think the quality of Lange is just a little bit better. I this, think this has the three quarter micro order movement. They don't even make this movement anymore. So this movement building. specifically, they actually discontinued making it because it was too expensive to make. Now they give you a full rotor as opposed to the three quarter rotor. This one is rare and I think a lot more special, personally. Even touching and playing with the watches, something feels a little bit more special. Something feels more and like more higher quality of engineering in this in the longer. Yeah. Also, I think the visibility, the eligibility in the dial as well. I mean, this is a really nice slate dial with the Brigade numerals on the paddock, fifty three ninety six. But this is so legible, so it, it's just unique. Can't go wrong with either one, but uh, 
I am going to just send them both to him. Audience, comment below. Would you trade in your Oyster Flex Daytona as well as another Rolex Steel Sports piece for a Lange annual calendar or a Paddock 5396G? Comment below. Yo, is that the one that just came in? Holy sh**. So look at this. This just came in. This, honestly, this place is like, you know, a candy shop. MB and F makes the coolest case because that in itself is, is a piece of art. Because look how the precision and the machining behind that. What I like about this too, this is a split escapement. So it features the uh, perpetual calendar module from Stephen McDonald, but mm -hmm. they removed the month, uh, the leap year indicator, uh, and just have the date and also uh, the, the power reserve indicator. I mean, it's just exceptional, it's so nice. I have something that just came in from Australia. Obviously, it's not going to be as sophisticated as that beautiful MBNF, but it actually probably came from further away. It came from Australia. Excuse me. Hey, Ilio. So where's the Mad Paris? The watch from Australia? It's on the table? Yes, man. Nobody touched it. <laughs> I mean, I love how they package them. Very unassuming. You know, this is a almost a, <laughs> this is a $70,000 watch in a, what looks like a box of bananas wow this is great packaging wow so this is cool this is actually the first time i've seen this so look at that can you hear that <laughs> a black card for your blackout watch wow 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 that's stunning i've actually never seen a pvd royal oak in person and and honestly these are it doesn't it doesn't have the same heft as a it's heavier than ceramic. This is a 15400, uh, so a stainless steel watch that they actually coated in Paris. So Mad Paris, they did the watch for um, for Drake, the watch that was designed by the late great Virgil Abloh. This movement here is uh, authentic. You can definitely tell by by the finishing, by everything is up to scratch with this model here. And it was just actually just coated with a black DLC material. This is gonna go to LA and the client's gonna get it tomorrow. So from Australia to LA in less than, you know, 38 hours. Super busy day. I have customers waiting for me. I'm trying to box things up. Let's close them on strong. Oh, you got these guys waiting in the waiting room. <laughs> Wait, oh, they are, they're, they're, they're in here? They're literally locked down. Carol doesn't know. Oh, really? Carol, can you, can you let them in? Why, why didn't she buzz them in? Gentlemen, how are you doing? Oh, you guys were in here. I thought you guys were in the, stuck in the little trap. How are you doing? Good? So two brothers came in. They actually just sold their medical manufacturing company and they want to celebrate by getting some watches. There you are, sir. What? Brand new, baby. Brand, brand new. new, brand new. Yeah, I don't even want to take this off now. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll need a link or two. Yeah. And uh, you have three here, so. Nice, I like it. Yeah, very, very happy yeah. that we were able to get you yeah, into this. Thank you very much. It was mm -hmm. quick. There's the plug. Yeah, hey, I heard you guys are kind of in the precision manufacturing. Does that kind of tie into your 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 love and appreciation to watches? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we we have a um, we have a medical device manufacturing company. Mm -hmm. So we make surgical implants. So strict contract manufacturing. Mm -hmm. So none of our own designs, but. Um, small precision parts, similar, I mean, not similar parts in the watch are much smaller, but still small and precise. <laughs> Company re recently acquired us that is uh, a big player in making watch components. And um, ever since we that happened, we started talking with them. We started <laughs> to see a lot more watches and instantly fell in love with it. I was looking on, online and I was looking at some of these implants and and, uh, and prosthetics and stuff. And they look pretty rad, actually. Like yeah. Just the, the engineering and it's just... Um, in, super, yeah, super precise. Yeah, holding parts to red blood cell levels. Mm -hmm. When it says it has to be an inch long, it's an inch plus or minus five red blood cells. It's oh, like oh, really? Wow. We make crazy assemblies as well, mm -hmm. with 13, 14, 15 or more components in one part of the function. Mm -hmm. But like that's why something like a perpetual calendar is so crazy. Mm -hmm. Like these crazy that we we've grown appreciative of complications. Mm -hmm. So like a perpetual calendar is going to keep time, time, date. Uh, calendar day, moon phases, and it's all mechanical. So mm -hmm. if you think about that, it's just gears and a spring. Mm -hmm. like, and, it's insane. And they count for leap years. Every four years, yeah. like a little, a little gear is just moving so slowly inside that watch that to the dot every fourth year, it skips the extra days in February. It was super interesting to learn about the parallels between medical manufacturing and high horology. Enjoy the new watch, Nick. Wear it with health. Yo, 
Yo, yo. So I'm going to New York to show all of this. The big guy, yeah? Yeah. We talked about the comp. I figured I'd go to the comp in front of them, the lap timer, turbs, the product of Siam, first automatic, tobacco turb. I mean, he's a bigger dude, so I didn't want to throw anything too small in front of him. He's a bigger dude with a, with a bigger, even bigger contract. So top row. Top row, gotta go. heavy hitter. But I mean, look, I mean, if you want to talk about value with him, that's something that you're going to have to reiterate over and over again. Like, he's a big guy. These watches will actually fit him. Oh, yeah. Which is key. Got major complications. You said he wants AP, so that top line is, is where he wants to be. But for the most part, yeah. poor little Rolex is in there. For some reason. Animals. Poor little guy. Yeah. Poor, poor little fellow. Listen, it's a discontinued black motif, so right. why not? Maybe he, I mean, well, that's what people I, don't say no to Rolex. No, I mean, yeah. when Anna said a poor Rolex, that was the one that I thought, because obviously All discontinued right, so style. so we got music. We got two chronos. Put them next to each other in the case so you can compare and contrast. Funny, he said uh, he has a budget. Yeah. He does not have a budget. No. That's it's, exciting. Uh, we were talking about it last night. My dad was like, you going to be all right? I'm like, yeah. You going to be starstruck? I was like, yeah. That's awesome. Well, listen, man, have fun. Good luck. Thank you. And uh, holler. Just if, if you, if anything, just FaceTime me. Yeah. If he has any sure. questions that, you know, <coughs> and we're going to take the Seamaster off and we're yes. going to put something else on. Cool. Because you can't be, you can't be walking in there with a Seamaster selling offshore it. turbs and stuff. You know what I mean? So we got to, we got to get that wrist but, right. Yes. So right now, this is Nick's time to shine. The past few months have been a little bit slow for him. And now is a great opportunity for him to meet a humongous client. As a matter of fact, he's a baseball player. So this is Nick's first at bat to make sure that this month crushes anything that he did in the past. Guys, thanks so much for watching this week's episode. I hope you enjoyed. Please be sure to let us know down in the comments what you'd like to see from us. And as always, be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, and do all those wonderful things. Take care.